come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. Our quest for total world domination. All that we ask of you in return for this amazing bounty of uh, information we're about to give you on some really bad B movies is that you go over to wherever you found us and hit that like or subscribe button. All of that stuff helps us get found by other like minded folks like you. And we like you. We like you so much, actually, that we want you to vote on what we're going to watch in January. That's right, listener, for four solid weeks in January of 2021. (laughs) One very long month. (laughs) We are going to watch the movies that you choose for us to watch. Now, the way that you do this is all you have to do is go over to our social media, which we're found on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. We're also on Twitter. At Saturday Freak Show. I mean, you can email us your votes. Saturday at Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And I suppose you can find us on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. But anyway, what you want to do is go to one of these platforms, find our voting block, right? There's a link that we have right there to a poll where we collected all of the suggestions that were made over the last two weeks. And on this gigantic list, you can vote for four movies. That's what we're asking you to do. Go vote for four. We're going to watch the four that get the top votes. You're going to find out what those are in January. So there you go. We will cover whatever you submit us to. Yeah, it's your time to shine, folks. So (laughs) get in there. Suggest movies. Game the system. I would. Uh, Get your movie up there. (laughs) Do whatever you got to (laughs) do. Well, for some of you, if you're new to this rodeo, you're probably wondering who this is that's talking to you. And I am proud to tell you that these are the Internet Radio Superstars. Holly. Michaela. John. And I'm Colin. I was listening back to uh, a few episodes. I thought the the Internet Radio Superstars thing has been around since, like, the beginning. Oh, yeah. I didn't Uh realize that. Oh, yeah. We were superstars even before we were superstars. I know. Now I I can't go down the street without somebody going like, hey, Colin, Saturday Night Freak Show. And they're wearing our T-shirts. Does your your mom just follow you around walking the streets? (laughs) Like, what? Wait, did did, Colin, why do you keep leaving me behind? You know that you can get our T-shirts. I mean, you can get like rubber, little rubber buggy bumper buttons and uh, all sorts of swag. Michaela, maybe you can tell people where they can find this. Yeah, tell us about the rubber baby buggy bumpers, please. You can go to tpublic.com slash user slash Saturday Night Freak Show to see all the merch we have. There's tote bags. There's baby onesies. Put the onesies on your cat and send us a picture. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, we love all that stuff. Um, so <laughs> Colin does not. <laughs> tonight's, what are you talking I'm wearing my Saturday Night Freak Show uh, t-shirt right now. Under your current shirt? Because I'm not seeing it. Right now I'm wearing Colin, it. you know we can see you, right? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. Colin was like, all right, everyone's going to go along with this, so I'm just going to say it. Um, and Michaela's like, nah, no, not today. Yeah, no. no, we're calling you out. Yeah, you maybe I do. It. I, don't I don't think I, I do. I don't have but... time for bullshit today, Colin. Well, that was right. probably this. all this cynicism that you're hearing seeping through it's your mind. Guaranteed your, because your of the movie. <laughs> because of the movie we watched, which was chosen by Holly. <laughs> Although I can't really say this is all her fault, but Holly. I heavily influenced this choice, so I'll take partial blame. Yeah, we were all kind of poking at her to do this one. Yeah, I don't. Uh, had you I fell down an IMDb rabbit hole, then yeah, <laughs> fell in love with it. So wait, all right. So the his, wh- why did we bring this? Is this just because of Red Brown? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, that's how it started. <laughs> that way, that's how it started. I was scrolling through his IMDb, and I was like, guys, he did a Bigfoot movie in 2012. Yeah. And then yeah, we, we were, looked we, into it. We were scrolling through his through his uh, filmology at the same time, and as I was reading the words Night Claws, Michaela said, oh, he did a Bigfoot movie. And I was like, oh, my God, we have to look at this. 
and I watched the trailer and you guys watched me watching the trailer and it, right. like, I was affected <laughs> by this trailer. It right. like, touched my soul. And then the icing on the cake was that Frank Stallone is also in this movie. Yeah. I got to the end of the trailer and I'm like, fucking hell, Frank Stallone is coming. It's coming. That's all it so, takes to get, there you go. So that, that's the selection really process is. for the Saturday Night Freak Show. <laughs> Holly, why don't you no, tell us? No uh, science behind it whatsoever. <laughs> What year was this? Uh, for the people who are just joining us now, we're going to have to tell them who Reb Brown is. Everybody knows who Frank Stallone is, I think. Sure. But uh, first of all, what year was this movie made? 2012. And who is the director of this magnum opus? David Pryor. And who is no. David Pryor? Sean, do you have well, a Well, I was going to say, he was comment? not only the director, I'm pretty sure he did everything. His name is in the opening credits of this movie like at least 20 times. Yeah, yes. he was. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure he was like camera operator. I'm pretty sure he was a sandbag at some point in this movie. Yeah, because his final <laughs> credit was edited and directed by David Pryor. Um, yeah. Okay, so we're treading into some dangerous waters here by mentioning this guy's <laughs> name. Holly probably knows when I, where I'm going with this because there's been a movie that has been circling the Saturday Night Freak Show and now that, you know, we're up to listener's choice, uh, we've had multiple suggestions for this. And I'm sorry, listener, that we got to this one first. But what other movie that longtime listeners of this show might know David Pryor as the director of? Well, a movie that I expect will make its way to the freak show at some point uh, called Killer Workout. Uh, A.K.A. Uh, Aerobicide, for those of you. Uh, there you go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's all starting to make sense. <laughs> yeah. This is the movie that haunts us. <laughs> I mean, it really does. We'll so get there Dom eventually. We, we talked about the baby for like three years. <laughs> is Dom like punching a steering wheel right now because he gets so close? <laughs> so close. I don't know if he knew that this was the movie directed by the same guy. It's like, oh my God, worlds are collapsing. Lighting. He's sitting there going like, you know, we're so all right, all right. close, guys. We have to keep it close, but we we can never bring that movie out. But we have to get really close. Sean, should we just pretend like we, it doesn't exist? We'll uh, do right? every other like David Pryor movie and be That's like, right. man, we, we got to go nice take it off. Filmography. I'm shocked gonna, that we got yeah. multiple sele- multiple requests for for Killer Workout. Uh, so yeah, if you want Killer Workout, go vote on the. Uh, the Saturday Night Freak Show January listeners pick poll. Um, all right, so David Pryor is the director of the movie. Um, I don't know. You guys I want? Say, though, I, I have I have his list of uh, other movies in front of me, and these have some spectacular titles. Yes, they do. They really do. I mean, go through them. All of them? You want to hear all of them? I'm, 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 no, I want to hear at least five examples. <laughs> Here, let me. Okay, let me let me go through a few. Um, we've got Relent, relentless justice. Ooh, I love it when justice is relentless. <laughs> relentless. That sounds like a Seagal movie. Yeah. <laughs> um. Let's see. Oh, not to not to be confused with Raw Justice because that's also one of them. <laughs> that's mm. the porn parody, and that's not to be confused with Raw Nerve, which is also one of them. Uh-huh. <laughs> um. Let's see. Those are my favorites so far. Jungle Assault. I like that mm-hmm. one. Isn't that yeah. what we watched? Jungle Assault? Oh, no. They're filmed in the same place. They all film in think, <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> where it's like, we're in the jungles of Vietnam. And it, look behind you. Know, it's like, yeah. yeah There's yeah. a road right behind them. Yeah. It's like, oh. Well, see, right this there. is. So David Pryor is a figure. Um, once you get into like the sub level of movies, so you kind of have to go back in time. We're <laughs> subhuman movies. Yeah. Well, we're in an era. See, there's like the B movie. When you think of a B movie, like a lot of cinephiles always kind of think of like the grindhouse of the drive in, right? But we're of the generation where all four of us are going to remember going to the goddamn video store, like maybe once, so at least once a week, maybe more times a week. Maybe some of us worked in a video store at some point in our lives. And sifting through colorful uh, boxes, VHS boxes, and you got to flip the thing over and read what the movie's about. You're hoping that the tape is behind it. You can take up to the counter and and check it out. I'm like describing like a, this is like this is like a hundred <laughs> years ago, right? Um, because now this is the thing. Like uh, I don't, I have a nostalgia for the VHS box art. Yeah. 
Because now when you look on so Netflix, good. I mean, is Effort Netflix was put into it, Colin? Why? Yeah, because they Effort were painted used to be put into it. They were right. like painted. They weren't Photoshop. They were like painted, right? I mean, do you find a comparison between uh, searching on Netflix and just kind of going through all the tiles, or you know, your Fire TV or your Roku versus the hours that you spent in the whatever blockbuster video i mean in the, in the i mean part part of it i mean part of it is different because i remember going to the video store when i was in like high school and it was like a night like that was your night out you go to the video store you go search through endless racks and and find your movie but it's that's <laughs> a different time that's when you you're a teenager you have that time to do that like nowadays i wouldn't want to go do that because I work all week and I'm tired and I'd rather just go home and turn on Netflix. So the nostalgia is attached to a time that we've grown out of. Yeah, no, but imagine, right? Because like your parents or your older siblings or something were working all day and then spending their evenings taking their kids to the video store or whatever, you know, uh, back in those days where you'd spend all this time like, what am I going to watch? And then you come home with like an armload, right? You like come home with like five movies. And they're all due back tomorrow. Mm. And you're like, God damn it, tonight's going to be like, well, maybe that was... Uh, tonight's <laughs> <yeah>. the night. <laughs> or, where I'm going to watch all these fucking things and get them back in 24 this hours. Is, they're all going to be rewound, Colin, too. This is Colin last night, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> well, no, I don't I gotta have to... I watch all these movies. I got to work tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saving time <laughs> yeah. now. Now I just go like, yeah, you know... No, actually, I'm on, to be honest, I spend a lot more time sifting through all the uh, you know options now. I actually, I, I'm slower at making decisions because there's so many options, you know? Yeah. And then you can, like, I'll try this movie for 10 minutes, and if I don't like it, I'll, you know? The, back in the day, it was like, fuck, I paid two bucks for this, right? I better <laughs> yeah, rewind you it. you gotta watch it. <laughs> Do you actually do that, though, Colin? Because no. I feel like anytime I talk to you, you, you watch the entire movie because you, you just have to know. Okay, well, I have done it, but it's rare. Yeah, usually I'm like, okay, you know, because I'm like, I'm, you know, a cinephile where I'm like, the filmmaker's trying to do something, people were employed, and like, this is their statement, and okay, I'm going to try it, even though I hate it, I'm going to keep going yeah. to the end. I try to do yeah, that. But, 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 if but we, if we, if we all did that, I wouldn't have made watched. it through this movie. Oh, yeah, it is. Like, how does this line up with the movie? Because that's not how we discovered this movie at all. No, because I know. Because I almost walked out of this movie, and I was in my own apartment. <laughs> that's, that's... I'm just, I'm trying to understand what the point okay, is Okay, I'm here. coming around to that. I'm coming around to that. Because back in the video store era, the name David Pryor was one of, I don't know, like, you know, there's, you have your Albert Pune's right. He made like uh, mean guns. Yeah, mean guns and uh, cyborg, and you know, actually had like some kind of mainstream success, and then dwindled down into the bad direct video or the uh, David Dakota movie, right? Well, you had the uh, David Pryor movie. David Pryor, along with a guy named David Winters, they formed a, a Action International Pictures back in 1986. Uh, they produced 46 films between 1988 and 1994. So Jeez. what the deal was, was that David Pryor was the writer director and Ted Pryor, his brother would star in all of those, all those movies that you were saying, like deadly prey future zone with uh, David Carradine rage to kill. Did you mention that one? Double threat mm. night of the kick fighters. Nobody can forget that Ooh, one. Night of the kick fighters. Yeah. Hell on the battleground. <laughs> And Shredder Orpheus, the one with, uh, that's like the, uh, yeah, skateboarding movie. So basically, this guy, David Pryor, spent like an inordinate amount of time in the 80s and 90s making these direct-to-video uh, movies. And, you know, people would come and they'd rent them. And, you know, I mean, it was enough to keep this guy employed, right? We're catching up with him in 2012 where basically he's still employing the exact same, uh, you know, like, techniques that he employed back then. <laughs> Only now the landscape has changed. He's still got his brother in the movie because old Ted does play Charlie Parker. Uh, Soldier of Fortune. Who the fuck is Charlie Parker in the? Just uh, he's the asshole who's part of a yeah in this Bigfoot movie, which stars uh, Reb Brown. Reb Brown, Holly. Where? How do we know Reb Brown? That name should be. Oh, you'll, remember, you'll remember Reb Brown from uh, your. The hunter <laughs> from the future. You're the, the hunter from I was the like, future. I forgot what the rest of it is. Yeah. 
Reb Brown. He's the man. He is, is the this man. Our second, he is the man. Is this our second movie, Reb Brown? A movie that impacted my fellow co host so much that I blindly bought it without watching it. I think all four yeah. of us owned that movie. We all did. Yeah, yeah we all I, bought yours. I missed yeah. that episode. Yeah, you, you weren't did. on that episode. <laughs> yeah, I bought it just based on your reaction. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was uh, that was like a next day is like, hey, we all own this now, right? It was like, yeah, we do. I, I yeah. think that like that movie is so iconic that I think Reb Brown is a freak show icon because of that movie. He has to be, right? Well, he's also um, like, I think when we probably mentioned it on that show, he was like a, a professional soccer player and football player who became an actor and a lot of, uh, you know, like pop culture um, fandom comes around. He was the first. TV Captain America, right? Yeah. Reb Brown was the guy from the couple of TV movies in the seventies where Captain America had a helmet and he had the uh, shield on the front of his motorcycle that he uh, drove around. Um, sidebar: Michaela, you're a big fan of Mystery Science Theater, right? I am. Holly is too. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen Space Mutiny? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, David A. Pryor movie, right there. That's one of the yeah. Action International pictures. Um, so, uh, like a space mutiny. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> space mutiny. I mean, this guy was like, so, I mean, like back in the day, in the in the heyday of video, right? He would have people like Robert Davi, right, or Jan Michael yeah. Vincent, or yeah. Brigitte Nielsen. You know. Uh, Brigitte. yeah andrew stevens of course you know who was in like a bunch of those things but uh sandal bergman tracy lords all those people would be in those movies so i mean he's basically this is kind of uh for 2012 it is kind of like time stopped or you know for this guy and he's still making the exact same movie that he used to make in the 90s only now the technology has changed and somehow <laughs> This is what this thing that we're trying to crack on this show. The technology he, changed, but he decided not to use it whatsoever. Is that? But I don't understand this, this Sean. Saying? I don't understand why when the technology gets better, somehow like these guys who've been making like a hundred fucking movies in their career end up looking like student filmmakers. <laughs> uh, they don't want to spend money, dude. But they I didn't want to spend money back then either. Well, I think it's come into it, but I think things, uh, I think you can get away with a lot less now as far as like shit being cheap. Cheap movies from back in the 80s, I mean, I think there's, uh, not everything looked great back in the 80s, so I think it all kind of just blended in and you were like, okay, that's fine. That taste does not carry over uh, to now, or at least till 2012. No, movies have to be $150 million now or they don't get made, like. I mean, I, this, but I think this is on a totally, this is also on a totally different level. This is like, I guarantee you, they didn't have one light on set for this movie. I, I mean, apparently from what we saw, they didn't need it. But yeah, there's no here. indoor shot. Really. Really. There's like one no, scene that a, takes place indoors. Yeah, there's a, the there's a camera here. and a dude and that. Yeah, there's a, what Michaela's talking about, if I'm understanding this correctly, you're saying, you know, movies cost $100 million to, to make, but I think... The the hundred million dollar movies have set an aesthetic, right? Which becomes how we see a movie and go like, that's a movie, right? I can identify it. That's a movie. That's the aesthetic of a movie. Professional, slick, quick editing. There's editing tricks being employed a lot. There's a lot of setups. Uh, this kind of like, I I actually think that like filmmakers with a budget are doing this because the little guys can't afford to do it. You know. They can't afford to do multiple, you know, setups. They have to basically just, I mean, this movie is just coverage, right? This guy cuts on a line and you cut to the character. They speak, you cut to the next character. They answer, you cut back to the original. And I'm like, you've made like a hundred movies and you're stuck on this fundamental. And he edited it too. Mm hmm. A hundred movies. Yeah, no, again, no growth so at all. Money, you can save money <laughs> if you just do it all. But maybe learn, that's it maybe you do it all but you learn nothing maybe he had editors on his other movies and he's like no nah, fuck them i don't need them i can save money i'll just do it right. myself i got it right yeah. i've quote unquote learned enough i'll just do it myself yeah either it's either one less person to pay or he just takes that money money so, i i put money in quotes because i don't know what was going on with this movie so colin you're more familiar with his, his previous filmography 
So is this like a rare thing? Did he not do his own editing and writing and stuff before? I am not sure on yeah, that. Okay. I know he, as his director credits are uh, lengthy. I didn't. Yeah. Uh, I didn't go and explore like what as a cinematographer. <laughs> but you can make a lot of movies, but that doesn't mean you make good movies. Look at UA Bowl, you know, just because you yeah. make a lot doesn't mean you're good at it. No, but even yeah, UA are- Bowl, like I have heard, I haven't seen it because, uh, you know, it's not my interest, I guess. But I have heard that Postal, right, uh, was some kind of like growth as a filmmaker. Like he's like finally getting kind of close to being like. Hey, you can actually put a movie together versus like uh, what was it? Island of the De- what the House of the Dead, right? Which is like an a- almost amateur movie that somehow got the theatrical distribution. It's like you do kind of learn the process as you make a hundred fucking movies. That's what I'm saying. It's like you figure it would just like by osmosis, right? You're you're around it all the time. You would somehow improve if you're a fan of movies. You're watching stuff. Somehow that would seep seep in. I don't think so. I think it's also got to do with the people around you because everyone is just looking at going, yeah, that's good. That's good. And I think he's just surrounded with those people. Um, I feel like I should put this disclaimer out there for a future, um, future possible episode. He wrote, directed, produced and edited killer workout. (laughs) (laughs) Well, what the, and that was like 1983 or something like that. Right. Uh, 87. 87, okay. Maybe so. he likes to have complete control of the process, Colin. Maybe that's just how he likes to do it. And has never, <laughs> ever w- discovered, like, like here's how you should actually edit a film, David. This is, you how, know. Yeah. How often is it a good idea to have that much control over your movie? Yeah. But, like, there's no investment on this movie, so no one cares that he has complete control of it, you True. know? There's, yeah. No one gives a fuck because no one's backing this thing, so... True. It's just his little... Like, honestly, this is how I would prefer Rob Zombie handle his movies. No one needs to see them. If you want to make them, fine, but we don't need to watch them. <laughs> well, there. I mean, it's all about, like... Uh, I mean, the idea... Because I, I, I looked, and both uh, David and Ted Pryor are still working today, and they've got movies in the pipeline that are still coming out. So there's the Isn't idea that there's dead? some kind of... Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, uh, David, David, Pryor. David, David Pryor. I was going to say, David, David, David Pryor's, Pryor's dead. dead. You're right. David Pryor's dead. He died at 56 at the age... Or sorry, say, in did he die before making this movie? Does that explain yes, why? Yes, he did. Wait. Okay. Shortly after. He didn't. He died He died in 2015. This was 2012. But Ted is yeah. still making movies. So there's a there's some kind of, you know, I mean... He's got like, a legacy to keep going. But there's a, a market, right? I, mean, I can't imagine there's a bunch of people who are like, you know, oh, man, another Ted Pryor movie? Star of Deadly Prey. No, it's those uh, 10-pack movies at Walmart. Yeah. I feel like, like you're really that's, hung that's up on this guy's career, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> well, like you're really, it's, like in it's, the it's weeds on something no one else has talked well, about. Well, <laughs> there's there's actors that we sit there and you know it's like they are completely unnoticed by uh, most moviegoers, but it turns out that they have a body of work which is substantial, mm. hundreds of films. Substantial you know, is a generous term. Well, I mean, you look at like in, in terms of volume. Yeah, in volume, because like okay. we all know the name right. Renee Quigley because she was in. Uh, some uh, relatively big B movies in the eighties, but she's still working today, right? There's all those type of people. Like Felissa Rose is still out there, like making tons and tons of movies because she was in um, Sleepaway Camp. Yeah, but there are these other people who kind of slip through the cracks. And this is what you, this I guess fascinates me about the industry, where you can actually have like a guy whose movies you have never heard of, right? That are so low down on the totem pole, but they are absorbed by like a you know. They go to the video store and you rent the movie and like, are there people who recognize Ted Pryor today? And they're like, man, I got to see like the next, but they're but probably Colin, going to see Red Brown. Bigfoot with Frank Stallone. And we have talked about none of that. Oh, that's right. We're that's getting the story to here. <laughs> We're getting to that. We're getting to that. That's right. You're Frank saying Stallone yourself, is also You don't think movie. there's Ted Pryor people out there. So who is this conversation for then? Oh, no. We're wondering if there are. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are there, are there we want to hear like, from <laughs> the way we keep track of like Fincher movies, is there a Ted Pryor? Movie? Is there like a Pryor dude out there? Like, there's like, I think oh, it's dude, Pryor movies out. <laughs> yeah, I think it? so. You might be I right. Think it's Colin. <laughs> I'm almost like be right. made more movies than, than Frank Stallone. This movie, Michaela, is about a Sasquatch. I would say Frank Stallone has a better IMDb credit list than Pryor. You're saying better quality films. 
Yeah, he's written some banging soundtracks. He was in Tombstone. <laughs> I know. I don't know. No, hey, I, I, I'm not disagreeing with that. Yeah. <laughs> he wrote, uh, he's not heavy. He's my brother, right? From uh, Rambo 3. He wrote Far From Over and Staying Alive, the sequel to Saturday Night Fever. That song fucking slaps, man. And he's in the movie, Frank Stallone. Um, so, okay. So why don't you give us the general outlines here? What are we, what are we expecting from this motion epic motion picture? Yeah. Well, <laughs> we have multiple parties that are in, uh, a wooded area. Um, a so wooded area is really the only way you can describe it because we're given no details. <laughs> it's Alabama. Um, they're in Alabama. And um, some people are looking for a creature that has attacked a young couple. We've got a, a sheriff and a professor and a mobster uh, all looking for a creature. We've got um, outdoorsy survivalists that are out camping. I mean, it's just there's a lot going on here, Colin. There's a cold open to this movie. There's like the first thing you see is like boobs in this movie. 30 That's seconds true. in because I hit the, the thing to go like, wow, this has got to be some kind of record in a movie. We've are got you Mr. Skin, Colin? At 30 seconds. I should. I mean, why not? Like, I mean, that okay, now, would I, the, now would be the time to reveal it. I haven't just, seen enough, yeah. but at 30 seconds was like pretty like, wow. That's okay. pretty like, woo. Yeah. Disembowelment at a minute 40. So, um, yeah. So Reb Brown is the sheriff of a small town in uh, Alabama who is uh, now like, you know, having the worst day of his life because there's people turning up decapitated uh in his town um dismembered missing feet mm -hmm. that's right because the bigfoot like tears the guy out of the car and like the girlfriend's holding on to him and somehow the bigfoot rips his uh you know rips everything but his feet off she's left holding his feet i'm, I'm curious uh if there are any uh anatomy people out there where are the <laughs> i want you to break down this death for me because i want to know the weak points on the human body to know if this is at all possible, because I don't think it is. And yes, I'm maybe getting a little deep in this oh, shitty well, Bigfoot okay. movie, is, but is I'm she, curious. I think they come out of the leg. Holding, is she holding on to his feet when they're torn off? They're yeah. torn off at the ankles. See, this is why it's not possible, because she wouldn't have been able to hold a grip that would actually rip them off. Let, I mean, forget about Bigfoot strength. She sure. would not be able to hold his ankles so that they right. were from his body. It is not equal pulling to where that no. would be able to happen. No. Yeah. I'm disappointed. Well, but I'm um, going to go with it. I'm going to okay. go with it. So, so as the sheriff of the town, it becomes up to Reb Brown to try and figure out, like, who's killing these people in my town, right? That's his basic, you know, shit, there's another one that's dead. There's shades of Jaws early in the movie. Yeah, because there's, like, a festival they talk about that we never see happen that's going to be happening soon. <laughs> right. I think we talk about a lot of stuff that we don't see. <laughs> There's a chastisement from the mayor, right? That mm. you have to have in these movies where it's like you got to get this cleaned up because the festival's coming. Right? Mm -hmm. You were expecting this is going to end up with Bigfoot tearing through this like festival at the end, right? Yeah, Isn't I was hoping like, for that. You would think Bigfoot that running through a great. parade that'd be awesome. But I, I think when we saw how big that. uh Middle of the woods tent party was. I think we knew that there was going to be no large gathering in this movie. Yeah, no, I'm not even 100% convinced that all those people were right there. If you <laughs> told me this movie was made during COVID, I would believe you because there's so few people and so little money put into it. <laughs> right? Yes. If if not, he's got to be the only filmmaker doing anything during COVID because he's like, I'm prepared. I know how to do it. I just shoot everyone single uh, one day at a time and then we're done. He has. Uh, really? I really hope. 2021 brings forth some seriously creative COVID movies. I really hope. <laughs> well, I think we're going to get a lot of Night Claws. <laughs> yeah. Hey, they shot oh, Children yeah, of the Corn. Yeah, just don't make them about COVID. We don't want to watch them. Oh, there's no. that, too. I saw the trailer for one of those. Already. I'm fucking tired of, of COVID. COVID year five. Based yeah. content. COVID Bigfoot? I think yeah. COVID Bigfoot? Come on. Right. Um, COVID Bigfoot. Uh, uh, Red Brown is having a relationship with the uh, deputy who I thought uh, she is also a star of like all these movies. And now her name yeah. escapes me. Sherry. Uh, Holly's got it. Uh, Sherry sure. Rose. Sherry Rhodes. Rose. Rose. Um, 
Which they're um, was they're she the really one from Black Scorpion? Really... One, two, three, and four. Yeah. Okay, that's the one. <laughs> um, All four. Rela- wow, bravo! The relationship was totally relevant to this movie, right? That's what I'm saying. I'm I like, think yeah. you know what I think it is. I have a theory. What is I it? I think I think they took the the your subplot of everyone wanting to fuck your. And everyone offering up their wives to Yor, and I think sure. they just brought it over to this movie. They're like, of course someone wants to fuck him. He's do Yor. You think, do you think that was in Red Brown's contract? I think so. Okay. You know, I'm going to choose to believe that. I like yes. that. Life's more like interesting if that was a choice. Yeah, because... I, I mean, mean, come on, none of us would be able to resist him. I wasn't sure if, like, who was more interested in him, to be honest, if it was the deputy or, uh, or in her... Sorry, the her I'm referring to is uh the, the professor? anthropologist who i don't think pronounces anthropology sorry colin it's uh anthropologist <laughs> <There we go. laughs> that was yes. the best take Which, they got apparently does With, she come from the college yeah. oh i wrote it down the- hold on this part was nuts she said she came from <laughs> i could not believe app. this it was the president's board of discovering new species <laughs> uh, it makes a whole lot more sense now because she says at some when point threatens the sheriff. She's like, "Don't tell me this isn't like uh, the official business. I can call the president right now and have you fired." I okay. We need to break this down and dig into this real quick. So, right. <laughs> can you imagine not just the current president we have, but any president ever being like, "We need to set up a task force to get out there and like." Find Bigfoots and uncover cryptids. Did like, you say that needs to be a priority. Current, did you say excluding our current president? No, I said, well, I I mean, I could believe it with our current president. That's yes. why I'm saying, like, but it's it's funny to think about with any president, honestly. Oh, man, if it was possible, it would have been done now, right? I mean, yeah. how come we don't have aliens? They must not exist because, like, he would have gone after them. On <laughs> well, they released, like, the <laughs> evidence documents and stuff. Yeah. That, but I feel like Roosevelt might take charge in a, in a Bigfoot hunt. Right? He was a I hunter, see that. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but the 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 uh, the the professor comes to town. She's hunting Bigfoot. We're led to believe this is uh, we recognize her. It's Rocky or Roxy from uh, Basic Instinct, right? Sharon Stone's uh, lover in that movie. Her real name's uh, Leilani Sorrell, right? Is that yep. what we got it right? Who yep. surprisingly is the best actor in this movie? Is that uh, is that debatable? Yeah. No, that's that's true. That's true. That's, that's fact. Yeah, I was like, wow, she should actually be doing other stuff because, I mean, or, or the level, the bar is set so low. <laughs> for, for Both this things film. can be true. Yeah, yeah, there's not much in here that's just like, oh, she's fantastic. There's, you know, not much to compare it to. Yeah. So she arrives in town and they're going to go hunt the Bigfoot. They think, she thinks it's a Bigfoot because they go to visit a scientist. Uh, this is the coroner, right, character who has uh, an unusual um, tick. Oh, I don't even want to talk about this guy. Okay, it's we're, a, we're, it's just a skip him. He's a, daughter. It's what? Uh, this is my, this is not my, too far into the movie, and this is where I was just like, I'm gonna walk out of my own apartment. Like I'm done my, with this. My like, husband I'm just gonna leave this running. This guy and, just wanted to stretch out his part. I probably he did. That's, well, yeah, that's a good theory. Yeah, this is the Which, actor who's in a movie who's like, well, I'm I'm kind of bored, and this is a you know generic part, so I'm gonna give it something by giving it some kind of tick and the director's okay with it and i'm gonna and there's no direction so i'm just gonna do whatever the hell i want but i mean we've seen parts like this right i mean we've seen the crazy guy from uh, i come in peace right who's all like i hopped up on the whatever he's drinking the coffee all the time and he's crazy or the michael j pollard from well he was also in my come in peace but tango and cash that's why i was like they should cast him in this i see the the slightly higher budget version of this movie but uh anyway he has a uh, Bigfoot ca- foot cast that he has captured in the wild that he's conveniently forgotten about. Yeah, this is the <laughs> other thing. They're like, they're talking to him like, oh, big, Bigfoots? You think those exist and everything? Oh, by the way, I have this giant footprint over here I forgot to mention. It might be related. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This could be. Do you think this is related to like a Bigfoot? Like, fuck you, dude. See, I didn't- <sighs> At one point... At one point, Red Brown even, like, asks him, he's like, what do you think? And he's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then two seconds later, oh, I have this thing over here that I totally forgot about, even though I just got it earlier this morning. 
Well, you want to talk about uh, plot detours that really don't go anywhere, because next we have to go visit, for some reason, a fella named Cooter. <laughs> because these, these scenes are too long. I know they got nothing else in this movie, but my God. This, this doesn't really serve part- any purpose, either. This... This is a fucking worthless scene. That's what I'm saying. A what what purpose worthless. does the visit to Cooter Brown in the bar serve to the this movie? We're not going to come they up with it. They thought it was funny. It's, it's, well, yeah, it's you funny because his name's Cooter. <laughs> and, his and his dog's, dog's name's, name's Cooter. Cooter too. Yeah. Right. You know what, Colin? I guarantee you all one big setup for a, uh, a Sasquatch fuck me joke. Oh, that's yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Gotta be it. And the eventual the payoff reason. that he was also fucked by aliens, or claims that he was also fucked by aliens. Right. Yeah. But I mean, hey, Sean, I mean, if you stick with this yeah, movie all the way through the end credits, you will be eventually rewarded with your patience by the ballad of Cooter Brown or the legend of Cooter Brown, uh, which is written by our star, Ted Pryor, which Sean is going to uh, recite for. No. Nope. Yeah. OK. Uh- <laughs> not, I am not putting that or any more energy into this movie. <laughs> Sounds like this is no, worthy. no, not worthy. Uh, my bloody Valentine, worthy. This movie, not worthy. No, never, the never. Cooter Brown. Oh no. Um, we crossed. he does not deserve a legend. Yeah, I don't get. I, yeah, okay. Uh, so he, uh, this whole action is cross cut with a subplot, which involves a, a woman taking a bunch of. She's a survivalist, I think, taking. A group of hikers uh, who don't nobody in that group gets along with each other. There's a couple from New York and a, another couple um, that they hate each other and they all get into the woods together. And it turns out that they're being Shut hunted up, by another hunter who's using them as bait to hook a Sasquatch because that's what we do. Is that what he was doing? We've seen the whole movie. Was that that it was? I think so. Him and his sons were they his sons? He had two guys no. with him. They were, they were just henchmen. Like henchmen, yeah. Yeah. Who were all, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> I just remembered what happened to one of them. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. Okay. Well, tell, I mean, eventually a Sasquatch shows up. I mean, we see yes. it, like, full body right at the very beginning of this. This is, uh... Yes. Question what? Um, suit? Yeah, it's it doesn't look alive. I don't know. Yeah, it like I think the hands and the feet are the worst part because you can tell they can't like bend or move or anything. You know, the the face is not terrible in close up. Like when you just see the mouth, it's okay. But when they you actually see the full face, it's it's obvious it can't move. Yeah, it has. Yeah, I don't think it has articulated eyes. The eyes are just kind of glued it's not on. A- it's not offensive, but it should be better for 2012. Yeah. So this is bargain basement cheap. This is something that you'd be able to probably pick up at the uh, Spirit Halloween store. Uh, we do to get a couple close-ups of its uh, articulated mouth, which basically when I say articulate, uh, the jaw opens and closes, and its lips, I think, move, and it has the prerequisite monster drool yes. off of its fangs. So there you go. You got yes. that. Uh, monster's favorite method of killing people is to swipe at them hugging. sometimes. No, it's hugging, Colin. <laughs> it's tackling. It's it's tackling. Oh, That's all. It's like it's like tackle and tickle. That's what this thing's doing. Just like <laughs> it's the grab and go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. It's like I'm gonna grab a snack for later. Yeah. It does that to the guy at the end, and then we never see him again. <laughs> does that to like five people? Like all it is is uh, uh, there's always two people standing right next to each other. And then the guy in the back just gets sideswiped by a fuzzy blur. And we're like, oh, he's gone. <laughs> I will say, though, I will say the first time it happens to the, the survivalist group, I didn't see that coming. I didn't either. And it made me laugh very hard. Yeah, because <laughs> it it's out of, nowhere. <laughs> just, it boom, out of nowhere. It is out of nowhere. And it kept happening. I'm like, this is fun. I like this. Yeah. <laughs> that made me laugh. <laughs> Well, I was kind of like after a while, you're like, but this, the movie starts with this dismemberment, which I mean, to its credit, there's we we see severed feet and we see a severed head. You know, uh, there is some kind of prosthetics work going on here. And you're like, oh, this movie might actually like pull something off. And so you're like, OK, the bar has been set. This is the type of movie we're going into. And I don't recall. You'll have to help me out. I don't remember ever seeing that again in the rest of the movie. The rest of the movie is like swipe 
and person disappears off screen or swipe with the claws and they have like a tear in their shirt they fall to the ground they're like oh oh i'm dead yeah we see <laughs> we see some like claw mark cuts on faces and like abdomens and stuff but that's really all we get yeah 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 not even there's some yeah not even no we get some oh no we get some head squishing too there's oh, a yeah. brain pop head there's a brain pop that's right. There was a brain pop. You're right. Where we get to see the white uh, brains pop out of yep. some guy's head as he squished. He, uh, does he rip a couple heads off? Maybe off screen. I don't know. I mean, but maybe. The way, the way that brain pops, it's so obvious. It's just like a latched door on it on something. Cause it <laughs> swings up like it's on a hinge. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. It was, pretty, it was pretty funny. <laughs> But we don't need it to be convincing. We just need to be within the tone of the movie. I mean, I just like, needed more of it. Yeah, I'm like, okay. sure, yes. We could use some of this in the first like 30 minutes. We, I, I checked the time. Uh, I'm like, this is, has to have been going for like an hour. It's like 36 minutes. Like we could have used a little more monster in the beginning of this movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, so this is the thing. Like all these people get, uh, all these campers eventually get taken out one by one, except for basically our uh, this guy. I don't know, Charlie Parker. That was his name, right? No, it wasn't Charlie Parker, was it? Yeah, I only heard Charlie. I, don't know. I was going to say, Charlie isn't Parker. that the famous? Uh, didn't he play like the sax or the old Charlie Parker the musician? Bird, right? My okay, whatever. Trumpet. <laughs> So this guy is like, I, I still don't, having seen the movie, know what like his deal is. I thought maybe, I'm like, okay, they're setting up something where he's like a soldier of fortune and he's here for some mission that he's on, some secret mission or something like that. But it turns out, no, his girlfriend is just along, an asshole. And he's an asshole. Yeah. That's it. There's nothing yeah. bigger to it. Nothing else. He's just an asshole. Shut up, Colin. Yeah, he's constantly telling his girlfriend to shut up. Uh, when the uh, hunter dude shows up, then then we get the the kind of mano y mano thing. Except uh, uh, you know uh, the asshole's got the the gun, right? He gets a drop on. Oh, and and he's a formidable opponent because he can punch you in the throat and crush your windpipe. And he's like, I just crushed his windpipe, and he's gonna die. <laughs> That's stop that it, Colin. <laughs> the attitude you just put into that quote is too far. Well, you have to get it was, it was sucking it was on your teeth a, at the end of it. It was above a whisper. He was just like, I punched him in the way, but he's going to die. Like, that's it. <laughs> that's it. It's You're delivered like, with no, like, zeal, no, no, no nothing. And he's just like, Ugh. yeah, well, no like, effort, wow. no emotion. I know. This is a bad motherfucker, Sean. It's a bad motherfucker. Oh, I'm so, it's true. Yeah, yeah, I guess his words don't matter. It's his actions. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Oh. Uh. <laughs> And it was, that's the other part of that made me laugh. He's like, all right, I'm going to fight you. And he goes, oh, he's down. <laughs> oh, my God. Because clearly somebody saw the last Boy Scout, right? Uh, so, yeah. Um, well, I think he shoved his nose through his brain in that one. Yes. Punch, kill the guy in a one punch. Um, so basically his whole party gets taken out, um, including his wife, who offers herself to the, um, you know, her captors. I'll do anything. At his instruction. Yep. Yeah. That's right. This is how we're going to get out of this. That's key. <laughs> but, but then he's like, you know, you look like you were too into that. So, like, get out of here. I mean, this is, uh, aside from the initial, uh, you know, 30 second boob into the movie, this is basically a sex free movie. So, you know, don't get your hopes up. So, um, the everybody's dead except for him. And then he's taken out by the hunter, which is like, okay, now we're just taking one of our protagonists out of the movie or antagonist, or whatever the fuck he is. I don't know. Well, yeah, and this is after we lost most of the survivalist party within yeah. 45 seconds. I'm pretty sure he was the last of the survivalist party, so that whole subplot, out of here. Right? Everybody's mm -hmm. dead. Gone. Pointless. We've got uh, Reb Brown and his team hunting through the woods and trying to find the, uh, the creature, right? Or he's going after the hunting party, trying to find them. Uh, at some point, and he they meets, all think there's a maniac in the woods as well. At this point, like they, none of them, Red Brown's party really believe, or Red Brown doesn't, that it's uh, a monster until they actually uh, come in contact with it. I think there's a psycho running around. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. the one guy that believes it is back at the at the station, right? We're gonna yeah, go hunt back. Cooter's Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah, <he's back laughs> <at the station. laughs> Wait, do that line again. 
No. <laughs> okay. So, it's a plan. Yeah, again, you get one like, and don't done. Put that out. <laughs> That's it. That's all you get. <laughs> so, um, at some point, sorry, uh, because we've got to keep the movie at least, uh, how long is this movie? 85 minutes. In, okay, so we, yeah, we have to pan minutes. out the running time, so the sheriff runs into Jimmy and his friend, uh, who are green screened <laughs> into the movie. Uh, it's a weird scene because it's like you could tell that they're they're in, they're riding in a in a truck and they're talking about woohoo we're gonna go drink beer and party, but we can tell that the forest outside is green screen and then they have a scene with the sheriff where he's like don't go out there boys and they're like we're not gonna sheriff and then after he leaves they're like ah we got our beer under the seat and we're gonna go out there and party yeah um but it's not that just scene, green screened it's that the tracking for the green screen is so poorly done you can see like green edges around the people still yes. so like they didn't even take the time to fully key it out mm -hmm. and it's extremely obvious that like jimmy and his friend are not actually there on the day that the sheriff is there there's a couple of body doubles in the the truck as we pull past them and there's a voiceover line and it's like they're not even here and you're cutting between two people i mean it's blatantly <laughs> obvious movies do this all the time but usually you're not keenly aware of it <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah even i i happened i watched the the kids saw some of this movie and he saw the saw them riding in the truck and he's like are they there what's going on like yeah. even he's just like this is shit dad <laughs> why are we watching this the thing is though once you start like noticing things like that in movies like oh those two people weren't on set the same day they're like talking to someone off screen you know that's reading the part for them once you start noticing that, you cannot unsee it in things. Yeah. Like, Holly didn't like the later seasons of Gilmore Girls. There's a couple scenes where Rory and Lorelai are clearly not there on the same day because they're... Oh, yeah. Because they, that show always employs two shots. It never does one shots of anyone ever. So the first time you ever see it in a series is like six seasons in. You're like, oh, so something happened and they couldn't be out there the same day. Because mm -hmm. you're cutting between the two of them. It's painfully Boy. obvious. It's all smoke and mirrors. Smoke and mirrors, ladies and gentlemen. We're uncovering the true secret history of Hollywood right here on the yes, Saturday Night Yes, this is cinema show. at its core. Um, so the, uh, but it turns out, so when we finally get down to, and I'm sorry, what happened to uh, Roberta, the deputy? Did she get killed or <laughs> exited the movie in She's some a, way? No, they gave, <laughs> sure. after the, after Bigfoot attack, <laughs> attacked the party <laughs> in the woods, um, she got uh, the one of the girls there got scared out of her mind, and I think Roberta was in charge of her for the rest. She's like, get her to safety, and mm. then she drove her around for the last half hour of the movie, and we never saw her till the end. Okay, yeah. so we're angling, we're we're up. we're whittling down our protagonist for the final confrontation I with think, the beast. I think one of my favorite, I think one of my favorite points in our group chat was at this time when Colin realized that we had not yet seen Frank Stallone and you were mm. speculating as how and when we were going to see him. And your theory is that he was actually the Bigfoot. <laughs> well, I that mean, one was my favorite. <laughs> what a, what a great. Ending. I wish that would have been. I wish. Thank God. He's like, you know, Bigfoot transforms into Frank Stallone and then he has like a speech about something or whatever. Then he goes rampaging <laughs> through the carnival, right? Like, as you do. But right. You know, no no this That's is not humanoids we, from the deep yeah the yeah. movie we wanted but, we um, didn't but instead no. uh we whittle it down so we basically got i mean like our our so frank stallone be damned <laughs> the movie is about this movie reb this brown movie feels like it is well reb brown the uh anthropologist right and eventually they're going to come in contact with the hunter the hunter is the bad guy. We've eliminated the Hunter's crew also, and so there's just yeah. him and the two of them, and somehow they're going to have a showdown, and at this point, in the Hunter's cabin that they find, and we're like, okay, there's a showdown. I don't know what this has to do with Bigfoot, but at least, you know, the good guys and the bad guys are coming together. And then, a shocking revelation. The first dun, dun, of several dun. shocking revelations takes place, and what is that? <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you it's that everything was shot day for night that's the first one <laughs> <laughs> and badly it's all the <laughs> this is why i say they had no lights on this because they shot during the day all the time uh a really bad day for night and it's like somebody turned the the vignette on yeah. like super it's because there's only everything is darkness in the frame quote unquote except for the outline of your character whatever one character you're shooting at that point 
it, and this happens for an hour of the movie, and it is fucking horrible. I couldn't see anything. That's yeah. another to thing. See. That's another thing. When you start noticing day for night, you see it everywhere, and you see like it done better in certain places. But man, like. Dexter had constant day for night that show. And once you notice it, like you're like, huh, mm-hmm. the moon doesn't shine like a fucking beam into a window. That's not how that right? works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, it's it's like almost, not that much shadow at night. Sometimes you're fine with it. Cause like, you know, nobody really complains about the opening to jaws, right? Well, that's all day for night. It's like convincing enough for twilight or whatever's happening there sure. at the beginning mm-hmm. of that, you know, and you have to excuse anything made before like, maybe 1980 when they had film that was fast enough to actually do it. But now it's like, now it really, it just looks bad because we're so mm-hmm. accustomed. Like we were saying earlier, it's like, this is what a movie looks like. You know, if it's professionally done, you actually shoot it at night and you put big light balloons up and all this other stuff. And if you just shoot day for night, it's like, we put a blue filter over our lens, but we went out in the woods during the day. Mm-hmm. And then to yeah. make it worse, like Sean was saying, I don't know how else to explain a vignette effect to somebody who's not in visual effects, but basically it you kind of make it's like you're looking through a and keyhole. If you can right. imagine you're darkening this. you're darkening all the edges of the frame, all the way around the frame. It's basically turning like making that darker towards the center of your shot. Yeah, I you're guess. making whatever's in, whatever your point of interest is is the only thing really visible and the rest of the screen yes. is pretty much dark and it's like mm-hmm. what have you done? Cuz <laughs> it feels extremely unnatural. It's like you're putting something up in front of the camera or something it, you're like just, what the I can't you trying to move your head seeing around. It's just in, in 2012 there's really no excuse for it. Like there's just there's just really no excuse. I was watching the shootest the other day and there was day for night and I was not offended by that. I'm like, if John Wayne's in it, I'm not offended by it. In 2012, I'm offended by it. Yeah. That's a problem. You yeah. can do better. And they can't say it was yeah. a stylistic choice. Cause I think that's one of the stylistic choices that we've all basically agreed. Uh, we don't, we don't go for that one. We don't go for the day, <laughs> day for night. <laughs> they could have shot this during the day. They, I mean like, and made it during the day. They really could have. Yeah, it doesn't need to take place at night. Make it during the day. Yeah, yeah nobody. Would, would, uh, you think that was an afterthought? That's my They're like, this should be at night. Like we shot it like it was supposed to be day. And it then, might like, just be a blue filter and premiere put over well, it. it. It definitely is. Yeah, but I mean, do you think that they made that decision after they shot the movie and it was supposed to be during the day? And then they, no, because they were sitting around a campfire, no. which was yeah, hilariously was animated, uh, <laughs> superimposed. Campfire, ugh. Ooh, that neon campfire. Yep. Well, anyway, shocking revelation is that oh, our... Yeah, the anthropologist? She's, she's an assassin. That's why she what? couldn't say it right. Yeah. yeah. Maybe maybe that was a character choice. Yeah. Michaela, you just like, validated you her. Perfect. <laughs> you, you stop, you stop, and you stop. You all stop. Do not do that for this movie. <laughs> I'm going to give uh, Leilani uh, an extra extra little bit. Of, I'm like, huh, you know, I thought highly yeah. of you already, but now yeah, you I really bet, were thinking about gave, your character. I bet she gave her character a backstory and everything. Yeah. She knew what she was doing. She's like, she wouldn't know how to pronounce anthropologist. She's a cold-blooded assassin. Uh, yep, so she got time for that. She kills <laughs> Reb Brown, our, our, the, our, a supposed protagonist of the movie, the guy who's going to save us from the Bigfoot, right? Yeah, a good old neck snap like the nineties. Yeah. I was I was really hoping he'd have a one on one with the Bigfoot and save the town, you know? Something. Exactly. But but he does no, but like somebody said in the chat, we glitched over into a different movie. <laughs> like it's not about Bigfoot anymore. It's about <laughs> Frank Stallone. It's about everyone being <laughs> a Tonko and having a secret agenda. Everyone. <laughs> Yeah, Ugh. this is a bizarre scene. She ends up uh, calling in Frank Stallone, going like, I found him. Then she kills Reb Brown, and so now it's just her and the hunter, right? And then Frank Stallone shows up, and he's this cool, like, soldier of fortune, and he's like, do you remember that you let, you know, Captain so-and-so, you know, do you remember being on this platoon? And you remember the men in your platoon? One of those men was my son. And I'm going to make you hurt like no one's ever hurt before. And he brings out the straight razor. 
And we're like, what the fuck are you talking about? What's happened? What mo- did, did, did we switch the channel while we were watching the movie? It really felt like it. <laughs> it, it, it feels like, like uh, I'm sure, I think a movie did this, where you're like, you're flipping the channels, but it's the same actors in every different genre of movie. It feels like we, it feels like we did that. Like we saw them in a romance, but we flipped the channel and now this is a war revenge movie. Like why, why, whose decision was this? I feel like this was Frank Stallone. I feel like this was all him. He's like, I'll come in and do this, but I have some ideas for my character. Does Stallone don't do nothing anything? Nothing to do with Bigfoot. Yeah, Stallones don't do anything without giving their two cents on how it should be done. Well, he had done some other movies for um, the director before. I think him and Joe Estevez, maybe like uh, what was Patrick Swayze? Don Swayze, I think. You know. Uh, so, <laughs> Are you guys but- aware of what Frank Stallone's character's name was in this movie? I hope testy. Frank's still on. What? What? Testy? Testy. <laughs> I hate that. All right. Hate it? Testy. Just a singular. Testy. <laughs> Just one. Yeah. Just one. It's like Just Hitler. It's like he's made of steel. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's going to take us a minute to recover. <laughs> probably, that's probably a story of his own life. I took my own ball out once. <laughs> I didn't tell you that story. <laughs> He's made of brass. I'm sorry. What was that? They're not steel. He's made of brass. Right. Yeah. Right. Brass. Swing brass alone. Where does yeah. Frank Stallone rank in the pantheon of celebrity siblings? Is he one of the better ones or no? I mean, based oh, on man, him showing a- up in that, it's like, okay, you know, he has a screen presence and all that because, uh, you know, it's like, you yeah. know, he shows up because he looks look like at his brother. Him. I mean, we know the Wahlbergs are not, not in that top mm, ranking at true, all. True. True. Yeah. But I mean, the, well, the Stars Guards. Stars Guards are up powerful, there. powerful, right? Yeah. yeah, they're pretty powerful. They're, they're solid. The Hemsworths are up there too. Mm. What about what about they tra- uh, the they, Murrays? They, they trail off. Ah, uh, the Murrays. Uh, I love the Murrays. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Baldwins. Quades. Give me the Quades. The where, where do we put the Quades? Ooh, uh, right. Randy Quades. does a lot of damage, unfortunately, <laughs> and I don't know if Dennis can make up for it. <laughs> there you go. Quades. The Carradines. I don't know. Um, There's too many Carradines. <laughs> this is our next documentary after. Good. Celebrity sibling. Yeah. Yes. Listeners, tell us your celebrity sibling power ranking. Power ranking. Yeah. Which ones do you like best? <laughs> well, I'd talking, like to know. At some point, we got to watch. Well, I don't know. Not on this show, but there's a movie called The Long Riders. It's a western, but they basically they cast the Keeches, the Carradines, the Quades. I can't remember if they had as like the James brothers, the Dalton gang, and all this other stuff, and just put all the brothers in the same oh movie together. God, as that's part amazing. of amazing. Yeah. What there if we go. made like a Warriors type movie? But yeah, it's all the siblings. Yeah, <laughs> as gangs, but real life, like, real life it's, it's, it's yeah, it's the Baldwin versus the fucking Scars Guards. I would watch that. How many Baldwin's? But I want to get all the lower level ones in there too. Like I want it to be like the Warriors, where like the Baldwin's maybe they're the protagonists, right? And they have to make their way across. I don't know the fucking Hollywood lots, the back lots to fight all the sure. other siblings, <laughs> right? And then for Adam territory. Baldwin shows up to join the Baldwin's for some reason. It's just like. He's Not defecting. It. Yeah. Did we determine yeah. at some point there's like 17 Baldwins, but only like five of them are in movies or something like that? I mean, there's like a crazy amount, of it, right? Of the Baldwin. Yeah, I think so. I yeah. feel like there would be. I feel like there'd be a twist where like the Overlord would be like the Olsons. Uh, <laughs> that would make we sense. Can't forget the Olsons. <laughs> they do That's some like timeless boss. beings. Right, like the cre- sure. like the creepy overlords. It's the Olsen. Yeah. Yeah. If you told right. me they were like 300 year old witches, I'd believe it. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. So I like this an movie. idea. Yeah, I know. I yeah, this is right. good. 2020, 2020 Saturday, Saturday Night Freak Show, because we don't do show. that enough. Um, yeah. But speaking of twists, there's twist. another twist at the end of this movie. This movie keeps... Michaela's twist. favorite twist. Michaela's favorite. I knew it was going to happen, and it still made me mad. <laughs> uh, there's more man, than one if, monster, guys. There's more only would have been better if, like, five Frank Sloans had walked out of that forest. <laughs> now, that would have been, been an ending. Yeah, because this is the weirdest ending ever, because Frank Stallone's about to deal his vengeance on this hunter for something that we have not, from another movie, right? Maybe yeah, it is yeah. a sequel to another movie. He's finishing off Maybe. some other movie with this one. I didn't look into it. I don't know. Um, I'd give him a lot more credit if they were. But the anthropologist slash assassin heads out into the woods, and she stumbles upon a family of big feet. A, a big, trio, big's, big's foot, right? Is that trio of big's foot. Yeah, like yeah. Paul's the sack. Yeah, yeah, right. like, yeah. Paul's the sack. Yeah, it's like Paul's yes. the sack. Yeah. yeah, big's foot. 
Yeah, I think yeah, that's Bigfoot. Right. <laughs> that's, that's the plural. <laughs> yeah. And then she goes, oh, shit. And then all of a sudden, it's like, the end. And we're like, what? <laughs> it was, uh, huh? We have Holly's you? clapping. <laughs> were, you cla- were you applauding at the end of the movie? Because it was the end. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I stopped her around like, there's got to be more. No, nope, I'm going to go back and see. If well, you still have the legend of Cooter Brown to, to, to come. Jesus. But this is a this is a move by like a screenwriter or something who's like, uh, you know what? A uh, hundred of these movies are going to have been made. and I'm going to do something different. You're going to remember my movie because it's different. or so, We're going to try something different. It's like some of these choices that you're breaking like the structure of drama like this isn't even a movie anymore <laughs> right it's not a movie you know? <laughs> like an ending yeah, yeah you're breaking like the fabric of life here like i'm pretty this is like, it's like uh interstellar like we're looking through the bookcases now yeah this is, this is gro- some weird shit what are you talking about? this is groundbreaking filmmaking this has not been mm. done before I think this they thought that. I'm sorry that you don't understand it, you guys. Yep. Okay? <laughs> yeah, that's going to be what it is. Yeah. And I say you have to understand why defense. drama works in order to be able to riff on it like a jazz musician, right? You want to kind of, you can't, if you have no idea why it works, then you make these kind of dumbass. Oh, Colin, that makes sense. It's it's about the scenes we're not seeing. Yeah. Right? Mm. Just like jazz, it's about their notes they're they're not playing. Yes. Right? Right. Finally, <laughs> I corrected. I figured it out, guys. Uh-huh. Yeah, this, this is, is the, the jazz, jazz of movies. movies. Holy shit! All right, gotta rewatch. Gotta Ergo, rewatch. this movie would only oh, appeal God. to true, like intellectual cinephiles like mm-hmm. us. I mean, okay, right? no, like- I no, I have, I have to stop. I have to stop you. I can't go on with this charade anymore. I can't. Not for this movie. Okay, not well, even then- in a joking way. All right. Well, maybe we should tell people what we actually thought of this movie. Yeah, let's be done with the movie instead. <laughs> All right. I agree. But before we do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. He's going to bring us your mail, and his name is Igor. Bring us that mail. Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. <laughs> Jesus, thank Igor. You. Where were you? Uh, it's Thomas Clevin kind of for like five minutes straight. I was like, it's kind of fitting that it took us that long to get there because that's the kind of movie we just watched. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It's like somehow like giant noises on camera. Are like Zoom's like, no, that's background noise. It's not yeah, maybe I'll, I'm okay. Maybe I am doing it too loud. Maybe we'll just I'll clap a little lighter next Try time. Once. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay. I heard okay. That. I think I just have to do it. Not as hard. Okay. Well, you are dismissed, Igor. Thank you very much uh, for the mail. We we appreciate it. And uh, we want to remind you how you can get involved in this segment of our show. All you got to do is uh, write to us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. Uh, That's that Freak Show. (laughs) At that Freak Show. That's the one. At that Freak Show. Uh, You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along Uh, at Instagram. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show about tonight's movie, Night Claws, which I was actually kind of surprised because I noticed like you go back in time and you're like, you shout out to the world Bloodbeat and people write in and they're like, I've seen okay. Bloodbeat and you're like, really? You say Night really? Claws and everybody goes, huh, what? Like Barracuda. <laughs> um, but anyway, Michael Whitaker wrote in. He hasn't seen the movie. He says that the uh, we we posted a picture of the Sasquatch from this movie, and he said clearly this stealthy beast has eluded man for centuries, and he's actually shocked. He says this is your first Bigfoot movie, and it wasn't Boggy Creek, which I know yeah. isn't technically a Bigfoot movie, but it's close enough. No, that's a fucking not nature documentary. It's not that interesting of a movie. Like it is a nature documentary. That. It's not. An, it's not the movie you think it is. It's but a really good nature documentary. Yeah. We spoke about that movie uh, indirectly, I guess, right? If you go back yes. and listen to our Town That Dreaded Sundown episode, we talked, it seemed like, a lot about Boggy Creek, so uh, maybe that's why it was overlooked. Um, Nick Siebel writes in and says, wasn't this the villain in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Use? Oh, shit. Toka Basically. and Razor, right? <laughs> yeah, this feels like the Halloween costume version of that. Yeah. It does look okay. like that. They rented that one doesn't it move either. A little bit and, yeah. and uh, Jacob Laws, who I'm going to point out is the third person then to write in who hasn't seen the movie, says it kind of <laughs> looks like the Oxcom from Watchers. 
Ah, Watchers keeps coming true. up. True, right? We did that episode. We have seen the movie Watchers, but yeah, apparently a lot uh, of you yeah. have. <laughs> the, the the sensitive fifteen year old Sean thanks you for keeping bringing that up. Yeah, it's a callback to our episode. <laughs> if you want to listen to that, well, about um, two weeks ago we watched a movie called The Curse of Frankenstein. Tony Genoway was kind enough to show us his entire uh, collection of Hammer Horror Movie Blu-rays. Uh, but he also oh, nice. said, sometimes you're reading stuff I've written just as banter on the air. Stop it. It's weird. <laughs> okay. Eh. You're welcome, like Tony. Like your head. <laughs> you're in your head, dude. <laughs> yeah. That was, uh, and that is a pretty awesome collection. So we know we're making those shows just for you. Um, <laughs> the previous week, or a couple weeks ago, we watched Fire in the Sky. Brett Williams wrote in and said, uh, um, so that was the story of Travis Walton, who was, uh, said he was abducted by a, a UFO. We covered this a little bit on the show, but Brett goes into a little more detail. He says, Walton's story is uh, similar to 60s abduction stories, including, including Betty and Barney Hills, whose story was told in a TV movie called The UFO Incident, which was broadcast on October 20th, 1975, just 16 days prior to Walton's disappearance. And, of course, the Hills had an experience in 1961 that is remarkably similar to 1953's Invaders from Mars with a description of an alien that's similar to an episode of The Outer Limits, which aired a few weeks before the hypnosis session. And it's funny how film and TV always seems to precede the alien abduction uh-huh isn't it was it all connected the truth is out there sean probably you know, you know it can stay out there uh, i can't go out there Colin. <laughs> that's right because sean we established is the guy who's getting out of the truck right yeah i have to air. stay inside yeah <laughs> i'm saying it's for covid i just don't want to get abducted by aliens well, it's that time of the night that you've been waiting for, listener. We're going to go around Holly. and tell you whether or not you should watch Wait, the no, movie. Wait, no, I can't do Holly. Uh, Michaela, let's get this over quick. Go, go, go. <laughs> I don't want to be here with this movie anymore. <laughs> well, you know you're in trouble when the, the Jack Link's uh, beef jerky Sasquatch looks, <laughs> looks significantly better than your movie one. How and, long were you sitting on that? <laughs> I thought about it because I was trying to think of, like, is there a better movie representation of Sasquatch, you know? <laughs> and, and it's a like, beef jerky commercial. It's a commercial. <laughs> yeah, that's the best <laughs> one. Um, there's not, I like, I haven't seen a lot of good Bigfoot movies. I, I feel like there's not very many good ones out there. And that's sad. I feel like this is an untapped genre that we can really mine a lot from, but no one is doing it. And it's frustrating. And movies like this definitely don't help its case. Um, it was hilariously bad in a lot of points, but I don't know if you should watch it. Because I don't know if it like was on that line, but I don't think it went over it enough to be like Night Killer or Miami Connection. You know, it mm. felt like a long 85 minutes in points do. And it's just, I don't know, like it's it's so fundamentally flawed in so many ways. And it's and it it is hilarious in points. So that's why I am a little torn. But I feel like there's probably other bad Bigfoot movies out there that are more fun. Um. So maybe wait till we discover one of those. So I think I'm going to pass yeah. on it for now. Uh, Colin, what'd you think? Well, I was going to say I'm also kind of torn on this movie because I got to tell you, right? I mean, we're coming off of Blood Beat, which we watched last week, which uh, I didn't find really any entertainment value to at all. This one I at least had fun with. Uh, here's, I guess I would recommend it to a very specific type of person. And that is uh, an aspiring filmmaker because you can, it's in, it's an inspiring movie for aspiring filmmakers because you sit there watching it going like, I think I could do better than this. And I believe that you can, right? Anybody mm-hmm. can make a movie better than this. And this guy's had a career that has now spanned like 30 years, 30 years. He gets paid to make movies. I mean, he must be making some money off of this. He can afford to hire Reb Brown. Star of your hunter. Okay. What, what, uh, what, do think, ooh, what do you think that? Uh, what do you think that? How you think Red Frank Brown Stallone, made for this movie? Right for one scene at the end of your movie. Um, I personally think Frank Sloan just wandered in out of the woods. Like I don't think he hired him. I think he was just there. Yeah, that's like he a was favor. Playing the most dangerous game IRL in the woods. He was like, no, I'm actually hunting people. Like yeah. that's what I was doing. I'm wondering if these guys go to like the American film market or something when they're trying to finance the movie and they got the poster and they're like, we got Red Brown and and 
you got Frank Stallone, and somebody's like, sign me up. You got Fred, uh, Red Brown and Frank Stallone? Here's like two hundred thousand dollars or whatever, you know. I mean, like, uh, you know what? I think they're like, we got Stallone, give us money, and I think that's it. Maybe they'd just be like, we got Stallone for this movie, so you know, two hundred thousand be good. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, what? Frank Stallone. Mm. Yeah, There's, I mean, yeah. That's this is how the business works, right? You just uh, it doesn't matter if he's in it for a minute at the end. His name somewhere means somebody will check it out, like we did, because Holly said at the beginning, top of the episode. Part of the draw was she saw that Frank Stallone was in the movie. So, bam, there you go. Uh, it's worth the price that they paid to have him in the movie because somehow <laughs> we ended up watching it. Holly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, to everyone else out there, it's it's not funny enough to be because it really it plays to me. I mean, basically, that was how I read it. It was like this is a movie that should have come out in like 1994 right on vhs shot on film but now it looks it's shot on video shot with the red camera so you know that's what they shoot real movies like. it still looks yeah. like it looks like video if you don't know what the hell you're doing with it you got to have a can you know a lighting cameraman and atmosphere right that's all we, we just want some atmosphere no atmosphere did you not see movie. the fire <laughs> yeah this guy doesn't know anything more than uh in the, what brian de palma always says this is a coverage movie it's like you cover that guy and you cover that guy and boom on to the next scene you move fast and there's no uh really thinking about what's happening at all um yeah i don't know there's there's nothing beyond that to recommend the movie i'm gonna say pass so now we're gonna go to sean what'd you think of the movie i hate this movie um Eh, don't watch this movie. Uh, I mean, yes, I laughed at it. I mean, a dude gets punched in his throat and then the guy delivers the line he does in this movie. You can't help but laugh at stuff like that. So there are moments of, I would say, hilarity because I laugh pretty hard at some of them. So I'll give it that. But it's because the filmmakers are so inept at making uh, movies, it feels, and the actors are not good either. I, I, I hated this movie for most of this movie. And when it gets to the day for night shit, um, I, I can't. I just I physically would not be able to look at this movie again. I'm surprised I made it through this time. Um, it's got a few funny moments, but fuck this movie. I, I'm, no, do not watch it. It's not worth it. Go find something else. I, they, they paint your house. You could be coloring. There's tons of other shit you could do. <laughs> Uh, I like you bring that really back. Hit a nerve with you. Yeah, yeah. Go what? Michaela? This movie really hit a nerve with you. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't like these movies. I can't take the badness of them. Uh, just, just the acting. Two people talking to each other in movies like this is the most boring shit I have seen in my life. See, and I can't. I, I would sit argue, there and watch it, Sean. I don't think it's the actors. This that the actors are doing what they do in other movies. It's the way that it's shot, covered, and edited and staged. It's like they're just doing what you know what they do. They're, they're still not good actors, but and it's well, still bad. Sean, not, you have a lot of stones in your hand for someone who brought Billy the Kid versus Dracula. Yeah. That is a goddamn Stone Cold classic. That is Compa boring Especially as compared fuck. to, Better to than this, this movie. movie. Now, I also like some boring acting. movies. Okay, I'll give you that. <laughs> uh, I mean, I like, I like uh, boring movies, too. I like bad movies, too. This is just a shitty movie, and I mean, if you want to go for it, go for it. Uh, but I would suggest against it so i'm gonna say uh pass on night claws that's the name pass on night claws oh, it's, holly it's also right. known as apex predator we forgot to say that uh, it has an al yes. alternate title is that better no okay nothing nothing would be better Colin. <laughs> nothing holly are you proud of yourself yeah go you know what i regret nothing okay. i have no regrets about this none whatsoever <laughs> life is about experiences sean it's about <laughs> Figuring out what you like, what you don't like. And I think you learned some things tonight about yourself, maybe. So I had an experience I where I fell off my bike and hurt myself. Like, is that like, just because it's an experience doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> it doesn't have to be good. But you learned something from did it, we, right? Did we learn something from it? I think yeah, you did. Don't watch that all... movie again. Don't watch these type of movies again. Yeah. I mean, I guess I, it's a good refresher on the like, oh, the red flags you see in movies. So like, oh, I shouldn't watch this. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I regret nothing. Um, I don't understand what you're all talking about. I think this movie gave us everything we could possibly want. I'm kidding. That's not true. <laughs> not, not true at all. Um, 
Yeah, I, I had fun in some parts. I think we're all, well, I think most of us are on the same page where we had a lot of fun with a lot of aspects of this movie. It's so terrible that there's some hilarity in that. Is it enough to recommend it? No, it's it's really not. I wish it was, and I want it to be. <laughs> Did you just pat this movie on the head? Yeah. You're just like, no, sorry, honey. Sweetie, You're just not oh, good you tried. <laughs> yeah, you but tried. did they know? They didn't even try, I think. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I mean, the... I don't know, the level of incompetence with this movie, like Colin was saying, this guy had has a 30-year career, and this is what we got. I am, I'm truly amazed by that. And it needed they needed to kick it up. They needed to kick it up way... We needed some gore. We needed more hilarity. We needed less uh, incompetence. <laughs> we needed less. We needed less. We needed less and we needed more at the same time. Um... So yeah, I think the I think all of the all of the bits were there that this could have been a really fun bad movie, but it just didn't cut the mustard for me. So I I, I can't recommend it, but I regret nothing, and I'm happy with how <laughs> it went, and I'm happy with the with the uh, reactions that I got from all of you. So success. And, uh, there you go. Yeah, I mean, people people no measure success in different ways, Holly. I guess. Yeah. This is a very successful freak show, and no one else should watch it. There you go. Well, don't worry, because no one listening to the show has actually seen it. So, no, I mean, that, that was the description of the movie. Um, <laughs> but that's the thing. I mean, you know, on some of the other episodes, I've been talking about, like, what separates, like, a, a good, bad movie from a bad, bad movie. And this one does have, like, an, uh, a level of sincerity to it. Like, they thought, they knew they were making a shit movie, but they weren't winking at the audience. You right. know? But... That it still doesn't mean that it's good, that it's good. <laughs> I I, legi- I legitimately think that he was proud of his twists in this movie. The revolutionary and, and experimental. That's right. Yeah. And these cineasts will admire what he's done in breaking the narrative form. Well, yeah. Stop. <laughs> you stop. <laughs> you're all you're all going to hell for the things you said about cinema during this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's a that's a four way pass on uh, on tonight's movie, Night Claws. So um, next week we're not actually choosing a movie. Next week we are going to uh, be doing our annual the best and worst of the year episode. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, this year was twenty twenty. Uh, so it gives us kind of limited options. So we're going to broaden our horizons and you'll have to, uh, so we're not going to do the best and worst movies of the year. We're going to mix it up. It's going to be an interesting, uh, we're going to, we're going to break the narrative form ourselves and we're going to find out how successful this is. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So tune in for next week's freak show episode, which is comes right off version the rails. of night claws. No, it'll be fun. Yeah. It'll be fun. Oh, it'll be fun. No, it'll be fun. No. it'll be like the discussions we'll we have off mic all the time, but our listeners get to hear it now. Yeah. It's the yearbook. Yeah, no, episode. it'll be a good one. Yeah. So tune in for our three hour episode, the best and worst of 2020 <laughs> coming your way next week. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.